Hi guys, Squad here. Welcome back to another episode of Spin Ties Mud Runner. This one follows on from the last video. If you remember, we'd kind of got ourselves uh, over to this point here and unlocked this C4320. And uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to take our fuel truck and our 4320 north. And we're going to aim for the fuel station initially and then start working our way up through here. And ultimately, we're aiming to get to the log kiosk where we can start to load up logs. Uh, hopefully onto the back of this thing here, which is in a state of, well, it's about one third damaged on its repair state. So uh, it's still good enough to load logs into. And um, the other option is, you know, we, we get one of these vehicles, our repair vehicle uh, over to here and repair it fully. In fact, we could do that anyway. We Perhaps that would be a good idea to just do that now before we start venturing further on. Uh, the truck we want is this thing. Uh, we could take it with or without the trailer. Uh, actually, let's do that. Yeah, slight change of plan. Let's uh, get this thing over. Let's bring it into that gear there. Release the parking brake. We'll put the uh, wonderful headlamps on. Get the all-wheel drive and climb up this hill. Now the question I have to my, myself right now is will this thing make it over the river? Uh, there's a lot of weight here and the wheels are not massive on it. Uh, hmm. We may end up ditching the trailer in the river <laughs> or before the river. Depends how things go. The power to weight ratio on this is not as good as the other truck. It's capable on its own though. This is a nice steady pace. Quite often in this game I've noticed the um, the way to play is not try to get there too quickly. It, it's about it's about sort of planning your route through the mud. It's about not spinning the wheels because that's inefficient. Uh, and it's about not burning too much fuel because that's how you get stuck. And of course you don't want to damage your vehicle. But it's really about knowing when you can you know change up and get a bit more speed for example like that there we go well you can see now just how ridiculously dark it is like it is completely completely pitch black now and all we've got are the wonderful glow from these Ancient bulbs of doom. Bright as they are, they're nothing by modern standards, are they? Okay, I know where we are. Question is, do we still need to do all-wheel drive? We we'll probably do through this bit. Let's keep right here. Slightly harder ground on this side, I think. I'll be happy at once we reach that fuel station. Oh. Okay, let's try turning off the all wheel drive and see if we can get away with it. Save a bit of fuel for a bit until we get to the water. So, the problem is when you're crossing over the river, is, um, I mean, obviously we know there's no rocks in this one now. But until you get to a certain, hang on, until you get to a certain um, point in the river, you can't reach the trees, so you can't winch yourself out because the trees don't grow that close to the river. So it's a case of you, you reach this limit where you can't winch yourself back and you can't winch yourself forward, and if you can't make it, you're completely beached. There's like one tree there and one tree on the on the right, which we use to pull ourselves back if need be. But until we can reach the ones on the other side, we're kind of committed. 
it's fast moving water. Okay. Time for all wheel drive. I don't know if this is going to work or not. But reversing isn't really an option with this trailer. So we're kind of committed when we're in here. Just have to hope the water's not too deep. Dangerous water level. Come on, keep going. Just keep hauling. Hope this thing has the traction. Oh yeah, come on baby, you can do it. You can do it. Lovely jubbly. I tell you what, doing that in real life, you must... You're halfway across that water, you're sitting there going, if I get stuck here... <laughs> There's nobody here to help me, and I've got to open the door in this river. I've got to climb out the window and leave this place. Get washed away. Okay, let's kill the all-wheel drive. I think selecting a lower gear, all-wheel drive, just steadily punching our way through it, is what got us through that. Okay, let's quickly have a look where we are on the map. Okay. What we can do is we can move this thing... We can position this thing further down the road now. And then we can catch it up with the other ones. And uh, this is a repair point. So we've got the repair, we've got the fuel now. This is a good position to be in. We've got three vehicles here in the area, so if we do get stuck anywhere, we've got options to get out of it. The diff lock's complaining. No, not the winch. Not the winch. I didn't want the winch. Oh, stupid thing. I used to winch myself onto the grass. Okay, what I wanted was that. I keep switching between uh, controller and keyboard, and I'm still trying to learn the controller button mapping. I know the keyboard mapping's easy enough, but it's once you get used to the controller, it's actually slightly easier. Also, you can just press the left stick like that and instantly go first person, which is very handy. Doesn't feel like we're going very quickly. Let's drop it to a lower gear. Okay. Time to stop and have a look which way we're going. Uh, oh, rip. Well, it looks like I went the wrong way. <laughs> I guess we can... Go, oh, man. Can we turn around here? That was a mistake. You see what I mean about doing stuff at night is just that much harder. Okay, hit the break. This doesn't want to reverse very easily. Okay, let's line it up. And we'll steadily... Bit at a time. Try to keep it in a straight line <laughs> with a horrible, horrible camera. You see what I mean about this camera? It just makes the whole thing so much harder. I 
mean, reversing a trailer is one thing. Reversing a trailer in mud like this. And the mud just starts to take its toll and change the direction of everything. There we go. Crikey. Back where we came from, turn right this time and head off down the other track. I think in situations like this where you're driving through very narrow um, tracks, lots and lots of trees, first person is actually very useful uh, because it's, it's kind of hard to get the camera position right when there's trees everywhere, you know? I think this is where we want to go. Okay, we can actually cut through here. It's complaining about the diff lock, so we'll turn that off. Okay, I'm on. Turn right. Put the diff on again. That's better. And turn off the old wheel now and just cruise. Just gonna find a place to um, pull up at the start, I think. Yeah, we'll just pull up here. Okay, turn the lights off and we'll turn off the engine. And what we'll do is we'll flick over to this one. And we'll start moving this one up the road. All right, I've moved the uh, fuel truck. I've brought it past our repair truck over here. So uh, if you look on the map where we are, we're basically here. And uh, what you can't see on, on this mini map, which you can see here, is just how kind of watery this part is. This is where it's starting to get... It's nicknamed the Bog. Um, so I think what we'll do is we'll drop it into a sort of a second gear. Out there, I think. We'll keep the diff lock on. And we'll have a look at the land. It doesn't look too deep, so I think we should be able to just cruise through this. See how deep it is as we start to enter it. Okay, we'll just keep slightly to the right. All wheel drive needed now. Blimey. It's really starting to paddle. Let's lower it down a gear. There we go. So the back wheels are getting a bit more traction again. Because of the water as well, you know, the friction's lower, so if we try to use too high a gear, we're just spinning in the mud. Look that looks amazing. Just look at those graphics. Oh my god. That is beautiful. Killer lights now. That is absolutely gorgeous. I love the way you can see the liquid in the back in the tanks. Look at it. Look at it sloshing around. That is just brilliant. And I'm looking at it so much. <laughs> I've driven into a tree. <laughs> Pay attention to where we're going as well. But seriously, how cool is that to see the liquid sloshing around? Like, that's the level of physics um, simulation going on here. Turn off the all-wheel drive and see if we can get away with it. Come on. Let's move up here. It's great though, isn't it? I mean, th this game... It's just... It's always needed to succeed, this game. It, there's just nothing else like it. This level of detail. And one of the things you hear people say an awful lot is... 
my god, imagine if you could combine the physics of this with... And then you start, you know, inserting other games like Euro Truck or Farming Sim or whatever. Whatever uh, your favourite sort of vehicle game is. Are we going the right way? Yes, the fuel station is past the rock there somewhere. Just keep it in a low gear until we get through all this. There we go. Turn off the old wheel. Move it up a gear. But now it's the daytime. It's just, I don't know, so much easier. You can see where you go and you can see the terrain in front of you. Aha, there it is. Now every vehicle, you know, will go over the same terrain in a very different way and it also depends on whether it's loaded or not. And uh, on one of the newer features I've also seen, which you'll see uh, a bit later on, on another map, is the game puts barriers up so that you can't take logs down certain roads. Now that's a game changer. Now if you stop it'll refuel. There we go. Now, we can also choose how much we want to fill up or drain this thing. So if you, you can see the liquid in there. Look at that. You can decide how much fuel you want to take, you know. Which is great. Like, you can just fill it completely. Imagine the weight of that now. <laughs> okay, let's um, turn the engine off. So, yeah, on some of the other maps, not on this one. Um... But there'll be like roads which will have a barrier and it'll say no logs and what you know you look at it in, and think well that's not so bad is it but what it actually means is you know you couldn't bring if there was a log in thing up here you couldn't bring it down here you have to take it a different way and it's actually realistic in some sense because it restricts you taking logs through things like towns you know they don't want muddy vehicles with lots of logs piling through there um so it is realistic but it also changes the game quite a bit because it makes it a lot more difficult Right, this is the thing that's going to do the work. Let's get it into uh, first gear, and we can get the def lock turned on. I know that you don't have to use the gears, like you can just use automatic all the time if you want to, but I actually think that um, you really should learn to use the gears because it's... I think it's, it's actually vital in many ways. Um, definitely on hardcore because you can't use um, diff lock but even without that just pummeling around in automatic all the time you won't you won't get a sense of when to lower the gears and when you've got wheel slip and when you've got you know when you're wasting fuel and going nowhere basically it's kind of part of the game to, to use the gears I think definitely worth um, working out how to do it These old vehicles are just amazing, aren't they? So much character. Like, they're very basic. They, they just appeal to you on a very basic level. Okay, we're going to need all-wheel drive now. And again, we're just going to watch out for two things the course we're taking and wheel slip pulling this thing through here now and pulling this thing with logs is going to be a very very different proposition well this uh, it's not a happy bunny is it it's not a happy bunny at all Yeah, if you had logs in here, I think uh, you'd, you'd be forced to use the winch to haul you through. It's struggling to move itself through here. It's very, very deep mud. 
Because I'm not sure we have to come back this way. Um, I think we can go to the top end of the map, which is hopefully easier. But only time will tell. There's a tree coming up here somewhere. There it is. The one I hit last time while I was doing this. Just look how thick that is. I just love the way that that's the mud, the terrain deforms. It's just wonderful. Moving up again now. Pick up the pace a little bit. So really now it's a question of well which vehicle do we want to use to do our scouting in? This is definitely not a scout vehicle. Like this is not the thing you use to work out which way to go because as you can see it can, even compared to the fuel truck this thing gets stuck and I think that's another important part about this game is all the different vehicles you, you need to learn what they're capable of what their strengths are alright turn off the old wheel A terrain like that we've used you know I don't know 10% of our tank just getting through that because we had to all-wheel drive the whole thing in a very low gear like the fuel truck did quite well but now it's full of fuel mm, maybe not okay 28 liters refueled I'm going to drive this thing past. Can't really stay here. I'll pull it up at the side there. Okay. Now I've got the repair vehicle and we've got this one back here, which has one garage point on it. Um... We've also got the things that are back here. In terms of a strategy, I think we should probably push on now and try and get to this thing. But really it's a question of, do we do it in the fuel truck or the repair truck? Looking at, like, neither of them are ideal for this. Looking at this bit through here, it looks pretty um, badly defined, doesn't it? And then if you keep left... Because you can't go any other way. You can't go through that. So you've, you've pretty much got to go left through here. So that's got to be our first waypoint. Then a left through there. And then I'm thinking that road might be easier. Turn right onto that road. It's got to be easier than this. Looks like a big body of water here. All right. So let's, uh, let's change to the fuel truck and see how far we can get this thing. Oh boy. Thought I'd left a load of room. Let's go first person. Okay, it's not doing so bad at the moment. Because we're actually at our waypoint already, blimey. I thought that would have taken a lot longer. Let's have a quick, uh, quick wrecking here. Make a decision. Yeah, so that's the road that takes us all the way back around that way. 
Uh, there's water down there. There's no real way through there, so it's got to be it's got to be a left through here. Right, I want to stay away from those rocks. In my experience, rocks are not kind. They are. It's far too easy with rocks to um, have wheels spinning. Just get completely stuck. They're absolutely horrible. Sorry about this camera, this is literally what the game's like. Okay, let's keep right through here. Uh, one second, one second, we're supposed to be going that way? On a hard surface, I had to quickly disengage the diff lock. Just double check we're going the right way here. I think we are, yes we are. Okay, so we're only to get, get to here, and then we're going to turn right. And I want to try and get through here as quickly as I can while we've still got daylight. It's going to be a lot more difficult at night. Okay, this looks like fun. Uh, let's keep left. Hold on a second, let's get the diff lock back on. Wow, is this an old bridge? It looks like it. Wow, that's slippy. You could actually feel the liquid just kind of trying to slide it down the hill and chuck us to the right. That was incredible. I don't know if you get that in non-hardcore mode, but in hardcore, that felt fantastic. That did. I could actually feel the truck behaving. Okay, this is where we turn right. And we'll hit the brake. Yes, the choices are that way, which looks very messy indeed, or this way, which definitely looks a lot better. So we'll follow it around to here. Just check those wheels are not spinning too much. Right, we're running fairly efficiently, like four litres a minute. So uh, I want to try and keep as much pace as I can. We're not burning through fuel. This truck is actually surprisingly nimble, even though it's full of fuel. Very capable. This is great. We're actually making really good progress here. This is the... We need to turn off the diff lock now. Oh, well, that's... I thought it looked like hard ground, but it apparently wasn't. Let's go first person. Now we follow it round, and at some point we kind of go left, I think. the log factory and then we can find out if that log grabber is actually broken or not should be on the left one I think that's it over there I see like a hut or something um okay this is interesting let's try not to drive through the middle of that thing Why this is heavy. <laughs> there it is, there's the grabber. Just keep momentum going through here. Yeah baby, here we go. Unlock time. Yes, that's cool. Okay, stop the truck. Uh, let's change truck and have a look at what state you're in. Actually, not bad. 277 damage, uh, mostly full of fuel. That's not bad at all, actually. Could have been a lot worse. Okay, 
Well, first thing to do is refuel. Look at the liquid. Look at that. I just love that. Like you can see the liquid inside being uh, properly modelled. Okay, so this thing... Um, so the logs are over there, as you can see. So if we quickly just move this and you can see what it's about. Oh. Now, if we go to advanced mode, um, like that, then operate the loader with A, and it says left and right on the right stick, operates the loader like that. And if we press A again, comes out of the loader mode, press Y, and it will use the loader grabber. So left and right on the right stick does that. Left and right on the left stick does that. And the Y key does that. And that is basically how you operate this thing. Now the diff lock is always turned on. So the only decision you really have is what gear you're in and whether you want to use all-wheel drive or not. What is interesting is the, is the way that you drive it one way and then pick up the other. <laughs> So I'm going to put that on stop because what I need to do is I need to drive the trailer into here. Um, then we'll probably need to turn the trailer around here, bring it back the other way, and then we'll have to load it up with logs. But the first thing we've got to do is get the trailer over here. This is the C430, 4320, sorry. We've got to take this thing over the same terrain that we just drove. Which should be fun. Like, some of it was... It was mostly okay, so we should be okay. Still the all-wheel on. Now we know where we're going, that helps. Turn off the diff lock. Once we've got this thing full of logs, loading up the logs will be fun. We're going to go north side, back down the map, so we won't be coming back this way. There's no point, really. Uh, was it, it was left here, wasn't it? I believe it was left here. Some people said to me, imagine this in VR. <laughs> like, dude, first person's enough. This in VR, bouncing around in the mud. Are you sure about that? Are you sure you want that in your life? I mean, I reckon being a passenger on this thing in real life and have you feeling sick. Death lock on through here. Oh, yeah, the rickety bridge. I forgot about that. Okay, we need to just keep left of this thing. I really don't want it because on the right there it falls away very quickly, like that. But equally, if you go too left, you're going to be beached on that, I reckon.
Now I reckon we can get there before nightfall. And then we'll be all set up to load logs through the night, which will be fun. Uh, I think it was this way. I really hope I'm taking the right... I should probably double check, shouldn't I? Yes, it's right. Yeah, nighttime logging. I don't think this thing simulates batteries, which means you can leave your headlights on, on the vehicles and not flatten the battery. I don't think. I could be wrong about that. I've not seen anything on the advanced menu. No, there's nothing on the advanced menu about it. Basically, this game is about getting vehicles and fighting gravity and friction. That's pretty much what it's like. But it's just so much fun. I love the spare wheel in the back. Look at it. Even the spare wheel's like bouncing around. And also when you get logs and the logs are tied up, it's not like, say, farming sim where the logs just don't move. I mean, you can see the rope on the back of the um, truck here. Even that's bouncing around. When you get logs in there, they all move around. Like, it's such... The simulation level is so high. It's just fantastic. Couldn't resist. Right, let's see if we can get away with the higher gear. Get us over the line a bit quicker. All wheel drive. The small trees as well, like you can run over small trees and you can hear them squelch and crunch. It's brilliant. I think in the multiplayer though, there's um, there's some issues between it synchronizing the mud. Like if one, if your teammate drives in front of you and drives through the mud, then he'll be creating um, tracks. Like, right? but when you drive along, you don't see the tracks, you don't see the grooves that they've carved out, but you feel them. So I guess, I don't know if that will be fixed for release or not, to be honest, but that's something else that needs sorting out. Do you know what, I wonder if we can actually make it through here. It's so hard to select second gear. You've got to press it with your thumb and then just press it down a little bit just to select it and it, it jumps into first easily. I think you should change that on the UI so that when you press down, it goes down a click and then press it down, it goes down a click again. So now we've got this fuel station here, this fuel truck. We could, we have, we have options. We could position it like north of the map and it'd be like a mobile refueling station. And when we need more fuel, we'll just take that thing to the fuel station, load it up and bring it back. Okay, it's getting dark. Now let's see if we can swing all the way around this water so that we uh, are facing the right way. back out again. No! I think I'm going to make it. Oh, yes, I did. Okay, we need to line this up now. Beautiful. All right, engine's off. Wow. 
Do you hear that? <laughs> that is just genius. I love it. Wow, sunset. Okay, so what we've got now is we basically choose the logs that we want. And uh, I've just realized I'll have to pull this thing forward. Uh, so that we can then get the grabber on because the logs will appear in here. And uh, we can load this thing up. But I think we're going to have to continue that in the next video. Um, so what we've done now is we've moved a couple of vehicles up here. The fueler and the logger. And uh, we've managed to fuel that thing up and unlock it. We're now in this position, which is a good position to be in. Uh, in the next video, we're going to load some logs. And then we're going to head out this way. Uh, maybe on the way, we'll, we'll take this watch point out. This is another log kiosk. This is a collection point. So um, there's no point going there. But... We need to work out if there's like a road through here or how this this flows and then get to this fuel station, refuel, uh, get that watch point, head down, get that watch point and drop off some logs. Uh, that's going to be like basically the uh, the first job to get some deliverables into here. Um, which point we might have to then take some of these, bring some garage points up to here, get that unlocked uh, and then we can kind of spawn out of here and repair out of here and unlock all the rest of this and... Uh, but yeah, that's all for next time. Hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. Uh, please give me a thumbs up if you did. Until next time, take care. Happy trucking.